Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Sit down, allow the devil come and destroy you. That's what happens to people. They don't do anything about it. And you see, and because they don't act, one day you find out that you just get up. Whereas it was concluded. Remember the book of Job. They were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily. And in one day, everything happened. That an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning. This realm is not the only realm where people function. There are powers that operate. They can go out of this realm and call people. Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody. Because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what Solomon said about it in the book of Proverbs. It can never say enough. This grave, it keeps opening. Hell and enlarge itself. Opens, receives people. Finds young people. Just when people are at the prime of their life, that devil comes from wherever. Don't ever make death look like a mystery. It is as predictable a spirit as sickness. Innocent people plan their lives. I don't know why I started talking about this. Plan their lives and do all. Do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life? He can't make you leave God. He can't make you this. The next plot is to kill you. Whether or not you die in Christ or not, at least you are dissociated from your body. It's still a plus for him. Make sure you insist that you are here for a long time. There is work to be done. Give birth to children and before the ch children are still young, you die and leave them. And leave them in the hands of wicked people. It's not to make you afraid. It's to let you know that death can eat us. It attempts, death is boastful. You say, oh death, where is your victory? It's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when you say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. First John. We are looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the, the parameters for measuring spirituality like I've taught us is first our conformity to the image of the Christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there is a dimension of it that I want to introduce to us tonight. 
and is a dimension where Christ is seated at the heart of every individual and I'm not just talking of born again born again is a decision is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ but there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart that place is the place of power that place is the place of authority that is the place where Satan death hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you there is a realm of immunity I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom but we become the distributors of this reality is that true first John chapter 2 and verse 15 a popular scripture here I want us to examine it just listen to me carefully first John chapter 2 thank you Jesus first John chapter 2 first John chapter 2 verse 15 the Holy Spirit is speaking to me again and I will bring laughter to her family and I will bring laughter to her family I will bring laughter you will hear again the sound of laughter the sound of melody you will hear the sound of laughter you will hear the sound of laughter that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying you will hear the sound of laughter you will hear the sound of laughter love not the world neither the things that are in the world please follow me carefully if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the lost thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey into what we call carnality carnality is not um it's not necessarily a bad word it's just a description of a state please listen carefully when we say a man is carnal it's not supposed to be an insult are we together the bible says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so the bible gives us the progression of carnality carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one love not the world the word world there is the world system the governing system the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen he says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit 
is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world is a warning is a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system their their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three it says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like nebuchadnezzar having built babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to lucifer i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be 
um, please come David Dam. Let's, let's not make a fool of ourselves here. There is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands. There are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself. A track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens. You don't just speak and then God, it looks like God owes your word attention. No, sir. No, sir. For I am a man under authority. And the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty. And on the strength of my submission, I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come. It's not my eloquence. It is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority. Are we together now? So he says, love not the world. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Thank you, Dibdam. This is the problem that Jesus came to solve. You see, if you have an encounter with Jesus, listen. He's not going to ask you whether you believe in the Old or New Testament. That, that is nonsense. Jesus is not going to ask you all those things. Jesus is not going to ask you and say, which part of the Ten Commandments did you keep or which law? Or, no, no, no. He's going to ask you one question. Just one question. His emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart. It's called Christ's self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without Christ being at the center of your heart but that becomes your undoing because they will destroy you and wreck your life brothers and sisters I don't care how many hours you pray I don't care how many Bible study concordances you have I don't care how many services you have per week if you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where Christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has true sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no sir it won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system Is God helping us? When your life becomes Christ-centered, your life will speak particular languages. Number one, thy will 
be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives number two that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal Jesus the revelation of Jesus becomes the obsession of your life not the revelation of your prestige not the revelation of your educational prowess not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things the revelation of Jesus in and through your life this is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center number three that any and all that you do becomes for his glory the Lord's prayer for thine is the kingdom the power and glory thine is the kingdom I receive all of the blessings but yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory the Bible says and they glorified God in me do you know listen do you know the reason why the more I by the grace of God keep learning about God I am seeing why it is hard come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last Friday can God trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what God gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say Lord lift me up take me high and God says no way stop praying and saying, "Oh God ask Lord what is it in me that is the resistance what is in anointing that God cannot give you what is in prosperity that God cannot give you Mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but God is not a fool just because he said I will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good are we together now yes do you know the foundation for jealousy listen the foundation for envy backbiting and all of these things is one word self 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 it is because I want to give a perception that I am a big man so if somebody calls me Joshua Selman and I now say where is the apostle you didn't add it you see that my ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and I react so I say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say I'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are it's like an, an action theme people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure as the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line 
I'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because I want to see his life change. I am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change. That's the problem the scribes and the Pharisees had. It was not healing. They would not have a problem if it happened through their hands. But the fact that it didn't happen through their hands, they just found an excuse and said, Madam, don't get healing on Sunday. And Jesus said, what are you saying? If your donkey falls inside a well on Sunday, will you leave it there and say, I will come back on Monday? You like money and you are talking. This woman, her, her health is more than your own donkey. If your donkey falls inside a well, wouldn't you go and get it? Hypocrites, Jesus told them. Do you know, if I can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of Christ, I have brought you to a place, it's a level in the spirit where you will watch Satan like this and he will watch you. Like the gulf that separated the rich man and Abraham, this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment i hope you like what i'm, pre I'm preaching this is a deliverance message yes it is yes it is yes it is i watch do you know brothers and sisters kai whatever god did to me may he do it to you truly speaking i say it with all humility my life is a free life i am I will, be, I will be lying if I tell you it was all my effort. I think there is something about the sovereign power of God. Maybe it's an election of grace. He did it. But the moment, hold my hands, David. Damn. Another person come. Emeka, come. These are the luggages we carry. One other person. The ladies. I don't know how you are going to hold me. Find a way of holding. Come, 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 come. We're acting something here. Hold anybody. Come and hold my hand. Okay, they hold him. She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him. That we are refusing. 
how old are you i'm 30 you mean it i thought you were 42 this is the lord because a broken a broken um, what spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face so this guy is carrying all this load do you think satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting do you know how satan ties them he doesn't use a rope he uses your heart that's what is there this is how to be spiritual you come to a point where you say lord i love you but these things are occupying my heart and lord i'm not irresponsible but then you have to become lord of my life genuinely i am too attached i can't sleep i sleep for one hour per day because i'm thinking about money a man can have nothing except it is given and you let go the issue of the job the devil will now deceive you and say you better be responsible if you don't think about it it won't come and he said no jesus i hand it over to you hallelujah this is the way of the cross you are getting free you too you are strange because you are now feeling lighter ah, now all of a sudden you could pray before you go to pray after five minutes you stop praying on your own and you are thinking but now you could stretch for one hour two hours you are becoming lighter and then all of a sudden this one is a lady hallelujah are we together this is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman. He can mean anybody. It doesn't have to be lady or a, a, whatever. Lord Jesus, I must make it happen my way. And God is saying, you will wear yourself to death. Lord, age is not on my side. Is it that you are not seeing? And God is saying, I am Lord of all. If I don't give you anything, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. And he said, Lord, I've been looking at this lady's picture. I can't even pray. And God says, I will, if you think I'm going to talk to you about that lady, you are joking. You better talk to me. Leave this lady and say, God, I want to. But this lady, she has become an idol. Maybe the lady, yes, it's true. That's the name. It's called idolatry. Let's call it what it is. She has become an idol. Not because she's bad. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with God. So God is going to say lay it down. Lay it down does not mean leave her. Lay it down means be willing to leave her. Hi. And you say, oh God, no now. How can I leave this guy? This is my 11th relationship. And while you are talking all that nonsense, God doesn't say anything. He allows you. Then... You now cry, cry one night, lie down, roll, and let it go. Your spiritual life. You notice that the moment you surrender, something lives in you. The more you die, you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down. You see that? Love not the world. Love not the world. This one is ministry. No, I must shine. My colleagues started ministry before me, and I mean, I must do ministry. This, this is a lot of, especially some of us that have the grace of God upon our lives. No, I must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is. And God says, Look, calm down. For three months, you are not holding any meetings. Oh God, my whole reputation was on this small fellowship. Now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again. God said, that's exactly what I was trying to show you. It was never about the prayer meeting. It was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition. So lay it down. You lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes. Never will it resume. Because you are, you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather, you say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just came back from the throne. And God said, you won't use me like that. Is God speaking to us? By the time you lay these things down, let me show you. The moment you focus on Christ, all of you come closer. I'm focusing on Christ. Look at what is happening physically. Are you seeing this? My focus is on him and I turn back and find out. So the goal was never to take them away from me. The goal was to be the epicenter of my life. Now watch this. Whereas before I was the maintainer of them, now he's the maintainer. So anytime he says, give the car, after all, Lord, is it not by your mercy it came? Take it. Not, oh God, this voice, if it's you, let my window share. All, this, all this, these things we do are proofs of carnality. I was sharing with the leaders, somebody called me to confirm 
whether it was God that spoke to him to send 50,000 to somebody and I asked him I said if that God told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say Lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we are saying from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you many people never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and God says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir oh I'm so blessed hearing this message myself are we together I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you I'm trusting you to get married. And Lord says, all right, I will direct you. Say, no, Lord, this is, this is the lady, this is the guy I must marry. If you are the one, it must be this. And God says, that's not the way it works. Thy will be done. It is for your glory. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. I give you all the praise. That's a spiritual man. Lord, this is the business I want to do. I thank you. I have passion for it. But Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Hmm. That's the language of spiritual. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say, please don't be angry. Pastor Femi, come next Sunday. No. Please, if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache, please come to the fountain where great men can rest. There is a Sabbath where he takes over your life, your ministry, and all that concerns you. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him born this into your spirit you cannot have naira and kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you you cannot have any idea until he gives to you you can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle that's why we don't give you count offering and count five naira you add puff puff one thousand took another drink one thousand or wine are we together now and then you come before God and squeeze 10 naira and you are smiling now all shall wait and God is looking at your heart look what Jesus did in the church he came and stood and saw what people were giving it was a reflection of their attachment it wasn't the money he saw a woman who had all do you know why Jesus was touched because she really didn't know who he was if she had known him it would be hypocrisy because he was there she just came that means she was doing it unsupervised it was what she would do whoever this God is of the Hebrews I love him and I lay down everything love not the world this is the problem of many people's destinies attachment attachment to money God gave you a car all of a sudden you carry that car and put it in your heart the garage is not enough for it how can you have a garage for a car and not and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with God inside the toilet. You, you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's why you say, oh Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. 
you provide a cupboard where you keep your document your certificate because your paycheck is there and then where do you keep him he's not in your heart he's not even around far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when i've not made sure he says david said i'm sitting here in a palace and lord i know you sit in the heavens but i've not built you a house and god said ah you would have built but you've shed so much blood however it was good that it was in your heart or you gather the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted luke chapter 15 let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son Luke chapter 15. Please give us verse 11. I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing. The story of the prodigal son. For many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother. All of them did different versions of the same thing. Follow me. Verse 11. And he said a certain man had two sons. How many sons? Two sons. Next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that's selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selman was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the god of heaven that touched the person that's self are you seeing that now yes the younger son had everything but every time he saw his father he had to wait on his father daddy i want something and the father was okay just a few minutes i said no no i want something so that i will it will be in my name and said daddy i'm tired of depending on you ah, that's what christians do lord i'm tired of waiting on you for this power give me this thing so that i can do it anyhow i want on stage why must i wait for you and worship before you come don't you know that is falling my hand after clapping for me and giving me water i come and stand on the stage and i say lord you have to come whereas people on my is my t-shirt they are wearing with my face not your face so lord give me this power so that i can operate it independent of you prodigal son he didn't want it he wanted it in his name meaning his control and the father said all right everyone that asked it receive it now watch this he says and not many days after the younger son gathered all together he took on his journey are you seeing he did not want submission uh -uh. a self-centered life wants to be the lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance
to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry scene two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what if, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was he not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he wanted he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher so there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry 
that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw god out of the plane and remain there alone tonight is a call you want to experience power you want to experience miracles you must come to a point in your life brothers and sisters you can stand in front of your jeep like this and say what a beautiful car and turn and say lord truly if you make demand of this i will give you and you are not just doing church language it's from your heart yes it's from your heart that way when god gives you the gift of a wife you will not beat her and say i must beat you that's how we are in our family when we are angry we beat we ask for forgiveness later on that attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him when god gives you children you will not allow them to become lawless and say no it's westernization because you will know that everything god gives you he demands that you act as though it's his own god never gives us ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom we are stewards of everything his resources mysteries whatever it is it belongs to him it only passes through me so brother you want to become a multi-millionaire do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand. Spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to him? Does your bank account belong to him? Does your anointing know you fasted for it to come, but does it belong to him now? Does your wife belong to him? Does your husband belong to him? Does whoever you are in a relationship with, does it belong to him? Do your children belong to him? Or they are his property? You are only a steward over them. Does your business belong to you? Does your church, does Koinonia belong to him? Or is Joshua Selman's property? Is his um, ladder of greatness? Ah, far be it from me. Too young for that kind of stress. Don't let me have it. Let everything I have be from you. Please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Listen, this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden the fibroid is gone it was so unconscious there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me I thank God for the things that God does. But I am so... Sometimes I just look and I say, Lord, Kai.
someone was going to bless me a few days ago and it was quite a very large amount and the person just said oh please send me your account number and I just as I was ending the call the spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for you know why God can speak to me like that because my life the account and the favor is his own I was so happy when he said it not just as a law for abundance it's with all pleasure my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised you're my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised hear the word of the lord tonight please come unto me come unto me all ye that labor labor profitless labor labor that you have carried your heart and put inside <clears throat> there is a realm of rest a man can enter the rest of god it's not irresponsibility everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles he is the opener of the door he is the lifter of men you have separated your ego from these things if it happens well for you glory be to god if it does not happen well to you lord be praised if the child comes lord i thank you for the testimony if the child does not come lord while i wait i still love you that's one who is christ centered listen that's a spiritual man that's a spiritual God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self, flesh. The lady must be this beautiful figure eight. The guy must be this, a millionaire must be this. And people keep jam-packing rubbish and trouble into their lives. How about people who don't even... Gone are the days, this issue of hearing God. People have eroded it. You just get up and say, I want to go to Abel Kuta because there's green pastures there. How about brothers and sisters? Let's respect and fear God. There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, it's not by your spirit please don't let me have for everything I need is in you listen we're about to pray think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning think of the reason why you woke up by 2am in the morning all that worry trace it down it is self it is self because he gives his beloved sleep you rejected it because you are i don't mean waking up to plan your life there are many they just wake up and say life what a terrible life how can this ministry grow how can this ministry grow oh lord do this, this. how can this ministry grow and God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the issue of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me.
God is speaking to us, I want you to take, I'm not preaching, I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness and let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying, but there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. No. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They will take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor who was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? It says seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. It was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy. I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years they love God but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say look just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark and you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to him. Ladies, please look at me. Sisters, let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things. Clothes, shoe, they are wonderful. God will give you more than your wildest imagination. Brothers, let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show I am rich so that all and sundry will respect you. It's all nonsense. If you are great, you are great. Honor is a mantle. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It's as simple as that. Tonight is a night of thorough repentance. We are going to cry before God and confess the idolatry, the sin, the carnality of idolatry to say, Lord, I've carried this thing on my head like a do-or-die affair and it's almost killing me. I hand it over. There is peace in handing over your life to God. There is peace in handing over your children to God. There is peace in handing over your job. Hand over the difficult boss. Don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50-50, agreed and you are in trouble. No. Allow God who will do it 100-0. He will give you. Bless you. We commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. 
Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way. I don't share so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching. We came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting, I was counseling people and I came out to just, you know, see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that, sir, I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you. And then I'm looking and say, my God, what is all this? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, just talk to this, please talk to the protocol people and let the church, whatever they want to do with it there. And I came back and I think the day before yesterday or so, they still call the protocol, the church and say, somebody has given a apostle a cow. How do we convey it and bring it there? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we in now? February. Car, it must come. And God is saying, Abba, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something. Open to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. God, I've been crying. I've been saying, can God is saying, look, look how you are making a mess of yourself. When you love God and fear God, please hear me. He would take the prayer request of somebody. It's not because I'm a man of God. Oh, go and ask him what I'm doing. Don't just say you are lucky. There's no luck in this thing. You work it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire. Have your way. Have your way. We are fighting too many battles in our lives. These battles are not even there. They were created by our lost. Sister, let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you, I will serve your house, and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze, there's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around, what of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be, not be six forever because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it higher for me 
don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart some of you as you are singing it God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything say take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything use all of me use all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me take all of me I release my everything You have my everything Say All of me All of me Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me All of me, all of me Lord You have my everything Use all of me Take all of me that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. remove everything every lust that I'm so attached to every lust that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ centered life a life where everything about you aside from God nothing is a do or die affair Christ Lord enthrone Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the Lordship of Jesus. Mention it. Whatever God has done and given you, mention it by name and bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The marriage you gave me, I bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The children you have given me, they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. I rededicate them a handover ceremony the job you gave me I hand it over to you the relationship you gave me I hand it over to you if you brought it you are the one who can maintain it the burden is killing me pray the burden is destroying me 
Lord, you are the one who gave me the prayer group, the church, the business. I'm tired of struggling by my strength. Bring me rest. Bring me rest. The rest that only you can bring. Belongs to you. your life like a charm favor open doors i tell you the bible says behold i and the children whom who gave you who gave you is god that gives increase i and the children the lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in zaria in nigeria in israel but where do the signs and wonders come from from the lord of hosts I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare. Pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders for signs financial signs and wonders supernatural signs and wonders dimensions of revelations dimensions of encounters dimensions of increase dimensions of influence dimensions of prayer grace access to the mysteries of the kingdom spiritual men kingdom minded people shabalaka to sekere 
Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. Please pray. confess that I need salvation that's somebody talking saying apostle if you will make an altar call I need to run to Jesus no playing games no playing games I need Jesus fast I need Jesus fast and there are people here saying apostle I thought that my heart was really with him but now I'm realizing that I need to rededicate my life I'm only going to count one to three because of time I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here very quickly one one are you coming quickly if you are still thinking about it stay back outside because once here is full we may not have people here again we have to stand outside ready to be Run to Jesus with all your heart. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life. Hey, it's a little here, a little dear. Then your day will dawn. He's at work in you. You're the Holy Ghost. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. If you are not sure you are not born again, join them quickly. And come and clear every gray area in your life. This is a destiny thing with Jesus. He's the center of everything. Those of you who are standing here, please just pray in one minute and say, Lord, I'm serious. I'm not just coming out because I'm emotional. I really am serious. I come to you like the prodigal son. I know you will not cast me. Men may cast me away. Critics may cast me away, but you never cast anyone away. If you're joining them, please quickly join them. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. 
hallelujah our time is gone i want you to lift your hands i see a number of you and those of you following online from whatever nation whatever time zone it is there connect with us you are handing your life over to jesus the bible says the word is nigh thee even in thy lips and in thy heart the word of faith that we preach say after me those of you here and all those who are connecting say lord jesus i love you with all my heart tonight i come to you believing that you alone can save me can change me can lift me i ask that you take over my entire life use it for your glory i receive your life tonight into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god the grace to love jesus and to live victorious is mine today and forever keep your hands lifted i declare your sins forgiven i declare by the immutability of god's counsel that you belong to him partakers of his divine nature i bless you i command and curse the power of sin the power of hell the power of the grave the power of sickness and everything that is not in the christ over your life i declare that it leaves you right now in the name of jesus i pray that the grace that keeps men please help those under the anointing there the grace that keeps men in the name of jesus will keep you and i decree and declare that everything that does not represent god in your life lives now and forever in the name of jesus amen and amen thank you so much there are a number of you i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands quickly there are a number of you just cooperate with them they will lead you hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.